Didn't see it there. Run! Okay, I don't have a lot of time to explain. But long story short, the cops really don't like it whenever you take time off jail for Halloween. Last year I gave you advice on how to protect your lawn from zombies and children, but the cops, that's like children with guns. So if I'm gonna protect my lawn from zombies this year, it's about time for an upgrade. Plants vs. Zombies 2 It's About Time is the sequel to the beloved tower defense game Plants vs. Zombies, except this time the game was made by the zombies. And by that I mean electronic arts. Plants vs. Zombies 2 has quite a number of differences compared to its predecessor. With there being different worlds you can go into in pretty much any order, the levels are much more difficult now due to new area mechanics and stronger zombies, and unlike in the previous game where you got a new plant after nearly every level, you only get plants in this game when you reach them on the overworld map. This leads to a lot more levels and a LOT more plants. I need to make sure my lawn can withstand any intruder, officer, zombie, or child. I need to figure out what plants are the best and fast. In order to do that, I think I'm gonna have to rank them. All of them. In order to buy us some time, I'm gonna print off a no cops allowed sign and put it on the door. That should buy us at least 20 minutes. Must be running low on cyan. <laughs> Wait a minute, this isn't a no cops allowed sign. This is Paper Bowser from the third game specifically. That is the last time I buy a printer from a hedge wizard. Even if it was a steal. Happy birthday. So you're a picture, huh? I'm kind of struggling with what it means to exist right now. Thanks for asking. Oh, it's no problem. Though I'd love to stay and chat and have a sleepover and become best friends for life, I'm kind of on the opposite end of a criminal pursuit. Do you know anything about Plants vs. Zombies 2? Plants vs. Zombies 2? You mean the sequel to the beloved tower defense game Plants vs. Zombies, except this time the game was made by the zombies. Yep, that's the one. Here's the deal, new best friend. In return for me giving you the gift of life, you're gonna help me rank a bunch of fictional plants based on their usefulness in a borderline predatory mobile game so I can use that information to defend my home against real-life officers of the law. Seems fair. In Plants vs. Zombies 2, there's a lot more to factor in for a tier list than the original Plants vs. Zombies. There's plants that stop or play off of map obstacles, plants that are completely nullified by certain zombies, and each plant has different abilities and stats that can be upgraded with in-game currency. The biggest difference though is in this game. Nearly every plant has a plant food ability, which is like an ultimate ability that can do a great number of great things for you. We will be taking all these in consideration for our ranking. And to make things more fair, we're going to be basing our ranking off of plant usefulness throughout the entire game, as well as only the level 1 versions of these plants, since those are the ones that everyone's going to have. So, without further ado, Danerade and I... Am I Danerade? Yes. Why am I named Danerade? Listen, Danerade, I brought you to life, and if I want to name you Danerade, that is my right as basically your mom. The Pea Shooter is a basic starting damage plant and similar to its first appearance, its usefulness tends to fall off pretty early on as in this game the levels tend to throw stronger enemies at you earlier. After a while the first zombie that will pop out will be a conehead or stronger, and wasting your son on something with as low damage and unversatile as a Pea Shooter just isn't as worth it. Pea Shooter sadly gets outclassed in literally every regard by something. He's like a jack of all trades, but like he's not even a jack, he's like a two. Even with the burst damage from his ult, he really puts the P in P shooter. D tier. Sunflower is your main sun producer for the early game, and though there are better late game options, Sunflower itself is never really a bad choice with its fairly low sun cost. 
In fact, it reminds me of the song Sunflower by Post Malone. I'm in love with the sunflower. It's good in the early world. That's not the right song! Be dear. The Walnut's back at it again to provide some basic defenses at a reasonable price. Now that's economics. The Wolf of Walnut Street, if you will. Walnut's ability to be fully healed and gain extra defense with the use of plant food helps him out as well. There are some zombies that can fully destroy any plant regardless of health. That can counter our baby nut, but nut is overall a very useful tool. B tier. The potato mine is your first one shot in the game, and in my last tier list, I placed little priority on one shots. I have repented. This time, they are essential. They are quite literally the most important plants in the game due to the gargantuan amount of gargantuars and other wacky zombos. The potato mine is a cheap, high damaging explosive that takes his sweet time. You know, he'll attack when he feels like it. He doesn't care if he dies or not. Unless you use some plant food, he gets ready a little quicker. He also births his children. Overall, just a reliable guy. Easy A tier. So the cabbage pole is a bit different to how it was in PvZ1, with certain zombies having resistances to attacks coming from a certain direction. So, for instance, this shovel zombie is immune to attacks from the front, like Pea Shooter, while the umbrella zombie is immune from attacks from above, like cabbage pole. Pults in general are better because even though there aren't many zombies that directly block straight shot attacks, there are a lot of environmental hazards that block straight shots, like ice, graves, and backpacks, just like in real life. <laughs> D tier. Bloomerang is one of the most interesting new plant concepts and designs in the game, with its name being a play on Boomerang and Bloom and Onion from Outback Steakhouse. Bloomerang blooms boomerangs at up to three zombies in a lane. Each rang hits and then comes back for seconds. They do okay damage, but its fairly high sun cost and its low rate of fire keeps it being useful in a lot of the later game situations. Unlike an actual boomerang, the bloomerang doesn't really come back. It just stays locked in the seed menu, full of seeds that never get used. D tier. Besties, let us pray. Iceberg lettuce is a godsend of a plant. Its ability doesn't sound super useful with it being able to freeze a zombie that steps on it for a couple seconds, but its real power comes with its plant food ability, which effectively makes it an ice shroom. And the fact it's got a sudden cost of less than more than nothing. AKA nothing. A tier. Looks like Grave Buster took a trip to the Sephora because it got a makeover. Grave Buster has had more of a glow up than just transforming from a Minecraft stone slab. Grave Buster is a much more useful support plant than in the first game due to graves being a lot more of a hindrance than the original. It also had its price reduced so much it's like they're just giving it away. B tier. The Twin Sunflower is the Sunflower mixed with the Sunflower. In the previous game, the Twin Sunflower was an upgrade plant for the Sunflower, where now all previous upgrade plants are their own plant. It makes them a lot more useful from them only needing one seed slot. Also, Twin Sunflower is adorable! It's not the best sun producing plant due to its relatively high price, but it's definitely not bad. And as Post Malone always says in his song Sunflower by Post Malone, I told the sunflower I was in love with two. That's still not the song A tier! Bonk Choi is quite the spiffing young vegetable if I do say so myself. I concur, Dana Raid, my dear acquaintance. The Bonk Choi rapscallion likes to duel on coming zombies in a match of close quarters fisticuffs if I've got that right, Dana Raid. That's correct, Vidis Vids, and with the Brawling Cabbage's high damage output, he remains a pretty strong wield contender through your entire journey, despite his lack of ranged attacks. This rapid rap scallion earned himself a mighty A tier, if I do say so myself. Next up is Repeater, also known as Pea Shooter 2. Take what I said about Repeater from the last tier list and repeat it. It hasn't really changed. C tier. Snow Pea, also known as Pea Shooter Cold Version, one of my favorite plants from the original game. The ability to do damage while also slowing zombies down? In the original game, slowing isn't super useful due to how much prep time you already get. But in this game, time is your biggest asset. Being able to stall for time to get more sun could be a huge game changer, making Snow Pea finally one of the more useful plants out there. When do I get to unlock it? Hello, Danerate here. Many of the plants from Plants vs. Zombies 2, as you may have noticed, 
cost real world money or event only seed packets. The event only plants we have no real way to rank as we have no way to test them at the moment. We also feel that spending $85 for all of the premium plants is a stupid and waste of money. The gem plants however can be obtained throughout the game for free and thus will be ranked normally, while event plants will be unranked and premium plants will be explained briefly and then comedically put into the F tier. I hope you all understand our decision. Onto the Pirate's Cove we have the Colonel Pult. It does less damage than its cabbage brother, but its 25% butter chance stun can come in crazy handy for helping perma CC scarier zombies. Colonel Pult's ult is also amazingly helpful with it buttering every opponent on the map. No need to butter up this plant anymore, it's going in the B tier. Snapdragon is another close range damage plant, though this time, somebody get this guy a mint! Its stink breath hits all enemies within a 2x3 radius in front of its toothy maw. Though personally, I think this guy's a fraud. I mean, its name doesn't even make any sense. The thing doesn't have fingers. C tier. Power Lily gives you extra plant food and it is overall an extremely useful and good support plant. F tier. Spike weed in this game gets a little goofy. Spike weed's pros, cheap, can damage multiple zombies at once, not very easily destroyed, and can break barrels. Cons can only damage zombies when they're on one specific tile, usually has to be placed towards the front where the zombies that can destroy it will usually be, it doesn't do a whole lot of damage, and can't be placed on certain tiles, because sure we can't plant this on a water, but no one's excluded from the dance floor! C tier. Coconut Cannon is a very high risk, high reward plant, which has the outrageously high cost of 400 sun. Coconut Cannon more than makes up for its worth with a reusable one shot for most zombies after a pretty fair recharge time. It's not a main damage dealer, but can really help reliably take down lots of huge threats as they come in a lot. In conclusion, the coconut gun fires and spurts. If it shoots ya, it's gonna hurt. Dear Cherry Bomb, I am sorry that I put you in C tier in my previous list. I misunderstood your true value and was blinded by your above average cost and long cooldown time. Though I see now those are but blemishes compared to your damage, area of effect, and versatility. With your usefulness becoming even more pronounced with the increasing strength of zombies, you rightfully deserved an A tier or possibly even an S, and this time is no exception. I wish you nothing but my deepest condolences. Vidi apostrophe S fits. S tier. Spring bean sucks F tier. Spike rock suffers from many of the pros and cons of spike weed, though exchange spike weed's cheap cost for spike rock's more damage and durability. Though I rarely find its stat increases worth the extra cost. This used to be an upgrade. D tier. Finishing off the Pirate's Bay is Three Peter, also known as Pea Shooter 3. Three Peter is like three pea shooters, and well, the pea shooter sucks. Doesn't really matter if you have three, if they aren't all in the same row, it's just saving space if you were gonna buy three pea shooters at once, which, why would you ever do that? Great rhetorical question, Viddy. There are actually some maps with extra win conditions, such as not being allowed to have a certain number of plants at once. For those levels and in certain worlds where your planning space is often limited by minecart tracks or missing tiles, 3 Peter can make use of your limited space. It's still not great damage, but at least has its own use. D tier. Squash. Yep, it does that. Up next is Split P, also known as Pea Shooter Conjoined Twin Edition. Split P is another plant only really useful in the Wild West to counter one specific zombie and can be used on the minecarts to attack zombies who get a little too far over yonder. That's a D tier right there. The Chili Bean is another one shot, and whew, is this one not good? For the chili bean to take effect, a zombie has to eat it. Once eaten, the zombie who eats it dies and then also farts, which stuns all the zombies in the lane behind it for a while. This isn't the most reliable one-shot due to the strongest zombies in the game having other effects that destroy plants besides eating them, so chili bean often gets anti-born before it even does anything. Though it does get points for the... 
Funny haha -ha, fart fart so silly and goofy. Please like and subscribe. Please, 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 please. Torchwood does what it did before, except now it's more redundant because there's a pea shooter with its peas already on fire. To make sure Torchwood wasn't out of a job, he had to adapt. Instead of only being a pea buffing plant, he also became a wall, an offensive plant, and an instant. What the f? And Torchwood's ability to do everything doesn't stop there. Its role as a premium plant has shifted around a lot to him costing from around $4 to being bought with gems to money to gems to money to gems to money to gems to available with seed packets. It's premium, but like, not really? I, I feel like it shouldn't go in F tier. But what are you gonna use it on? The three Peter? F tier. Next up is Lightning Reed, a low damage plant that can attack multiple zombies and has a very long range, being able to attack zombies in rows adjacent to his own. It's alright. It's alright? You're alright! I love the Lightning Reed! It's 100% my favorite plant! I mean, just look at how cute it is! And sure, on its own, it's not very strong, but its power comes from how quickly you can get a large number of them out, and for PvZ2 where you don't have much time to set up a defense, that can be so important. Its range also helps cover multiple lanes during early setup, and as far as I can remember, there is no zombie immune to its lightning attacks, like so many zombies are to so many other attacks. Sure, it may not have the best damage, but its range, speed, sun cost, versatility, and look are all so good! This is what the starfruit wishes it could be. A tier. Tall nut is an interesting case, where it's kind of just a stronger walnut, packing much more health and able to block all sorts of low flying zombies such as imps, jetpack zombies, and dodo zombies. On paper, the tall nut is superior to its walnut brothers, and in certain situations, it is. But in general, we found it being hindered extremely thanks to two reasons. One being its shared weaknesses with the walnut, i.e. instant deaths, long cooldowns, nutcrackers. But the other is its sun cost of 125. Now, that's not terrible, it's the same as God's gift to man. But for a whole row of these, it'll cost 375 more sun than the leading brand. This also has the more subtle problem of not being able to get them out nearly as quickly as the other nuts, which in this game where you have virtually no time to set up your defenses is a critical crack in this nut. Though, if you do have a good enough sun credit score, it's a pretty decent and helpful option. C tier. The Jalapeno is a one-shot that destroys all the zombies in a line for 125 sun. Something alright there, Viddy? Dane, I think I'm going insane. I thought that there was this video of this guy doing a food review made around 2016-ish, and where in, in which he calls a Jalapeno a Jalapeno for comedic effect but I can't find the video anywhere. I can't find any evidence of it existing, and I'm starting to think that I made the whole thing up, and I just, I don't know how to deal with that fact. I thought it was real, and it's, it might just not be. B tier. We're at the second P of the West, the Pea Pod, also known as the Pea Shooter Mini. The Pea Pod is an interesting plant, where you start by placing one slightly weaker Pea Shooter for 125 sun. However, you can stack more of these plants on top of each other to fire off more peas per row. It's not the best for how expensive of a plant it is to get to its full potential, but for maps with the limited plant win condition, it at least has a use. Never mind. D tier. Melon Pull, a strong splash damage plant for a high sun cost, can be really good in levels where you can get a lot of sun production off early. Nothing to joke about for the melon pull, just a reliable guy. Easy A tier. Winter melon, what Dane said, but cold. S tier. Imitateur. F tier. Whoa! The laser bean be like. The laser helps pones all zombie nubs in its lane. The laser beans alt be like. I'm a fire in my laser! Danerade be like. S -s 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 Baby nut. What the fuck? Fiddy apostrophe S be like. Blover is a nice cheap utility plant that gets rid of flying zombies. It's alright, but nothing that'll blow you away. C tier. Citron is a lot like the coconut cannon, being an expensive plant with a large recharge time but insanely high damage. The only downsides, besides the aforementioned downsides, is that you don't get to control when it attacks. It just does so when it's ready. 
So unlike coconut cannon where you get to choose when you want to fire and it explodes in a radius, this just hits one zombie and oftentimes not even the one you want. This guy can be a real annoying orange. Boo. D tier. EM Peach is a nice cheap utility plant that disables machine based zombies. It's alright, but nothing too shocking. B tier. Starfruit is a plant that shoots 5 star projectiles in different directions, and also does pretty moderate damage. It's a pretty neat plant, and I hope nobody gets so excited about talking about it that they throw this 5 star meal in my face. This. Just throw the meal. I, d I don't get it. Is it is it like good? I, I didn't get why it was good in the original. Like, was it even actually good in the original? Dane, it's okay. I can just put it in C tier again. Nobody cares. It's just throw the meal. Like what you said about lightning, Reed. Am I just not getting it? It can't be that good, right? Dane, I did not make a five star meal just to have it not thrown in my face. No! Where, where do we put this thing? We both apparently underestimated it before. It destroyed my hopes and reputation. I clearly have to respect it. Yeah, I can't help but to reject it. Dane? I have an idea on how to rank it. Four out of five stars. The Infinite is a low health translucent walnut that can't be completely eaten by normal means and regenerates lost health over time. However, its true strength comes with its ultimate ability, which is to put a giant barrier over the entire map in front of it. This barrier is crazy good because it stops most zombies, some of the most annoying projectiles in the game, and covers every single row. There are some levels where I'm unsure if they are even beatable without this ability. The infinite clearly deserves an infinite score. However, that's not a letter, so it goes in A tier. Magnifying grass. Uh, yeah, I sure hope it does. So the magnifying grass is a stationary plant that you fire manually like the magnificent coconut cannon. However, its beams are fairly weak compared to the cannon's raw power. It also uses sun to fuel its attack, so even though the magnifying grass isn't super expensive as a base, it can quickly drain a hole in your metaphorical solar pocket. Like a solar tapeworm, or like depression. D tier. Tile turnip lets you create a power tile used in the far future levels. The tile allows you to activate multiple plant food effects with a single use, and that is a cool and unique ability. Too bad its sun cost goes up for every one you plant, making it not all that useful. Inflation be damned. D tier. Hypno Shroom is another one shot that needs to be eaten like that terrible bean. Not that one. Though this is one that can be a bit more useful depending on what zombie you can get to eat it. As it tells the zombie to go home for the day. They deserve it. And if you use a plant food on it, the zombie that eats it gets a free subscription to Planet Fitness and becomes a Sigma male who crushes all the betas in his path. C tier. Sunshroom went from a questionable sun option to one of the best sun options. It keeps its original gimmick of starting off with less sun, and it gives more as it gets bigger throughout the match. Now for the faster levels of PvZ2, this may seem like an odd choice, but with a plant food, not only does the Sunshroom give you a lot of immediate sun, but skips past its yucky teenage phase and grows into its chad adult phase where it gives 75 sun per drop. This can help you save a lot of sun on sun producers, and gives a lot of sun in the late game as well. A tier. Puff shrooms were so good in PvZ1 that the developers had to nerf them for this game. They also did get buffed because you don't need coffee bean for the mushrooms anymore, but that's besides the point. They still cost less than the spit on my boot, but this time they disappear after a while. Unless you happen to reset the timer with plant food, which affects every puff shroom on the field, then they are just better than ever. A tier. Last time, I kind of did Fume Shroom a bit dirty, with its ability to hit through zombies being way more useful than I originally realized. I'm sorry, buddy. I won't say you probably smell bad ever again. Its multi-hit ability is also much more useful here with the pure amount of zombies that show up so quickly. Though its damage is less than desirable, and its range isn't great either. It's still very reliable for its sun cost though, and I'm proud to say that Fume Shroom has finally escaped the prison of D-Tier, and now belongs in B. That's a difficult feat. Trust me, I know a thing or two about escaping prison. Houston, we need backup. The sunbean is yet another bad bean. The sunbean is a plant that needs to be eaten, and when eaten by a zombie, the zombie will drop sun as it gets damaged. It costs 50 sun. It's like planting a sunflower with extra steps, and worse, F tier. 
Glad to see Planters is getting in on the whole arms race. Good for them. The Peanut is the pea shooter wall version. The Peanut takes the sword and shield approach, being mediocre. On one end, it's like two split peas, a terrible, terrible weapon. While on the other, the shell of a nut, an amazingly average shield, the same as a walnut. I really like this guy, but his extremely minimal damage does not make up for his much higher sun cost of 150. At that rate, you might as well just go tall nut for double the durability at the cost of the damage of a single pea pod! D tier. Now don't take what I say out of context, but Magnet Shroom is a very attractive plant. B tier. Listen, I like Chomper. I think he's extremely underrated in the original games, yet I will admit, he was not the best plan out there. Some say he is the worst, which I completely disagree with, but understand where they're coming from. Why the fuck would they make Chomper cost cold hard cash? He used to cost five dollars! Honestly, he should be worth the spit on my boot! And Chomper's even worse in this game, with there being the Toadstool, which does the same thing, but also gives you sun while eating! EA, what is wrong with you? Lilypet helps put other plants on the water. Yeah, Dane, only if your real-life iPad could do that. No, I'm not throwing my iPad in a pool for a bit. Come on, Dane, it'll be funny. No, I'm not going to destroy my $300 iPad for like a two-second joke. You'd have to be some kind of stupid and reckless moron to do something like that. Tangle Kelp is basically a worse squash for water zombos. What do you want me to say? D tier. Hey Nico, wanna go bowling? I thought my name was Danerade. No, Dane, I was trying to make a joke about the bowling bulb. A very creative plant that resembles three bowling balls, with each bulb projectile able to bounce off the screen and zombies while getting weaker with each bulb tier, also growing back a bulb if it doesn't attack for a while. So once a lot of zombies get on the screen, the bowling bulb just constantly does its weakest attack. Oh, it's a GTA reference, also D tier. Homing Thistle is kind of this game's replacement for the cactail with its homing spikes. Even though Homing Thistle can go on land, it loses points for not having cat ears. All of my favorite things have cat ears. If only they made a pea shooter with cat ears, it might actually be good! B tier. Guacodile is kind of like a jalapeno that also shoots low damaging projectiles before it goes off. It doesn't instantly kill them either, it just harms them by swimming into the un- Banana Launcher is kind of bananas. It's like Coconut Cannon, but different. It's similar to the Cobb Cannon from the original, but only takes up one space in the map and doesn't do as much damage. Yet it still costs an insane amount. The cost is, dare I say, bananas. If you can get them down, they are crazy useful. Just good luck getting a loan for bananas. I have a potassium deficiency. Hurricane is kind of like a beta jalapeno. Instead of killing all enemies in a lane, it damages them a bit, freezes them a bit, and sets them back a bit. It can honestly be more useful than jalapeno in certain conditions, specifically against gargantuars, and its cooldown time and price are way better than the peppers. I do have to say though, it's nothing that's gonna blow you away. Oh wait, it, it, actually, it does do that actually. A tier. Hot Potato is a nice cheap utility plant that thaws out frozen plants. It's alright, but nothing all that heartwarming. B tier. Pepper Pulp prepares powerful projectiles to punt puny phantasms. It's like Cabbage Pulp, but does more damage and warms plants around it during the frozen tundra levels. Pepper Pulp's a pretty pleasing poggers plant. B tier. The Charred Guard's a defensive plant in a whole new way. Instead of being a wall like our previous shelled pals, Charred Guard just sees a zombie and goes, GET THE F*** OUT OF MY FACE! He even gnaws until his arms fall off even. Poor guy. His dedication, damage, and durability really earned him the A tier. Fire Pea Shooter, also known as Pea Shooter Warm, is a pea shooter that does extra damage and warms plants like a pepper pole. Finally, a decent pea shooter. Not a great one, but one that's not terrible. It must be my birthday. Oh yeah, it actually is my birthday. B tier. Here we have a 25 sun stunion plant. With its only ability to temporarily stun zombies in front of it for a while, it may seem simple and not very stunning. But let me tell you, it has its layers. 
C tier. Hudabega is just kind of a baka. I just don't get it. It flies over water, but can still be eaten by zombies on land. It only attacks diagonally like the bishop from chess. It's completely defenseless from the front and doesn't even do that much damage from the sides. It's like a flying star fruit. D tier. D tier. A dandelion. Must be the last one of the season. <laughs> Lava Guava is another one of those one shots you hear about. They honestly are just kind of meshing together now. Lava Guava, it explodes fire that does damage and stuff. It spill fruit smoothie on the ground, it's slippy and stuff. B tier. Well, you know what they say, float like a butterfly, red stinger. That's from Cars when Doc Hudson explained to Lightning McQueen that the red stinger was a pea shooter like plant that did more damage the farther back it was planted. And Lightning McQueen rebutted with saying the red snapper should belong in B tier. Pixar sure was ahead of its time. Next up is the Aki, the Autonomous Catapulting Ejectomatic Emitter, which means it attacks on its own, it shoots projectiles, ejects projectiles, and emits projectiles. You'll never guess what it does. Its projectiles bounce from zombie to zombie, which is cool, but like it just shoots. C tier. Enduring is a slightly more expensive walnut. This expense, however, goes towards offense with it damaging nearby zombies who try to give this poor guy a hug which ends up working a lot better than the offense of the peanut. And Durian sounds like Enderman. Viddy, what does that even have to do with anything? B tier. Stalia is a free purple plant that slows zombies in a radius when set off. It doesn't do damage, but you know, it's free. Can't go wrong with free. I got stabbed once, and I guarantee the only way I'd get stabbed again is if it was free. C tier. Gold Leaf. Gold Leaf creates a golden tile, which is a type of terrain that produces sun if there is a plant on top of it. Now, that's not terrible. It could be pretty useful, especially considering there are some wind conditions where you always have to keep a specific plant from being eaten. Getting some sun from them sounds awesome. Well, the devs decided that would be too useful, and in fact, doesn't allow for them in the majority of levels outside the world it was introduced in, which it comes in at the end of the world. Just plant a sunflower. F tier. Seriously, what could be worse than that? Okay, given our history, I'd say it's important to bring this up. They completely redid Cactus, with it first of all not being able to do the only thing it was good for in the original games, instead making it a weird combo of Scaredy Shroom, Spikeweed, and Laser Bean. It's weird, but not bad. I feel like the Cactus may have actually earned a promotion here. Cactus goes into the abstract dimension of continuous conflict here. Next up to the mic, it is that beat. A reused concept now seen complete. The gloom shroom's gone, this laid retreat. They took its gimmick and hit repeat. A doom platoon, the beats excrete to send the zombies to their defeat. The vertical lanes, it keeps the heat. Though in some ways it can't compete. No! Its damage is below the average. It cannot beat the heat or power of a single cabbage. The main play style of this route just simply won't suit any kind of route. Most typical strategies won't see recruit. Most players pursued as another sweet brute. Celery Stalker is the stalker that's actually good for you, unlike Terrence. One rapid fires aura auras onto the trap zombies, while the other brother holds the line until the trap zombie is disposed of. They truly make a great team, like Viddy and I. That sure is right, Dana Raid. And like our friendship, it's A tier. A friend oh. is a friend. Thime Warp is a plant that will not make you want to do the time warp again. It's like the famous broken clock expression. It belongs in the trash, get a new clock. The Thyme Warp actually has a really cool ability where it takes all zombies on the screen and sends them back to the beginning of the map. Really cool, could be a nice get out of jail free card if the zombies have already beaten your defenses, except it also heals the zombies and can only be used in Neon Mixtape Tour. We don't want to make these non-damaging plants too good, or else who's going to buy Chomper? I just don't get it. Why do they make these genuinely creative ideas for plants so bad by putting so many unnecessary restrictions on them? Like, I get why stuff like the hot potato, the perfume shroom, and the lily pad are all area restricted, but why thyme warp? It doesn't make any sense!
Electric Blueberry isn't giving us any clues to... Vidi? Vi Vidi, where'd you go? Dang! I got sent whoa, to the whoa. past! I'm whoa, whoa, 10 whoa, years whoa, into whoa. the past! Oh, uh, are you are you alright? No, no, Nate! I put ice room in D tier! It's, Do you have any clue Vidi, Vidi, what I was okay. thinking? It's okay, it's... Vidi, calm down. Star it's, fruit it's fine, it's, it's okay, C it's okay. Here. Garlic. I cannot think of a single scenario where you would need to put zombies into a specific lane in a level where there is not a zombie that just immediately destroys or ignores the garlic. Garlic stinks! F tier. The Spore Shroom lives up to his name, and as a personal challenge, when he gets a kill, he makes a clone of himself in the Spore Creature Creator. These guys can be really useful at stalling, and really helpful for whenever you have the limited sun-win condition or there are a lot of weak zombies on the field. I think it's a pretty fair C tier. Intensive Carrot makes sure that heroes never die. Well, one every 20 seconds. And it, um, only comes back with half health. And instead of just planting the plant again, you used a hundred sun and a seed slot to do that. This thing would be better off being eaten by a rabbit! There, I said it, F tier. Grape shot? <laughs> no thanks, I'm trying to bring back prohibition. F tier. Well, Dane, we finally reached the Jurassic period, where some of the most annoying levels and gimmicks are. Yeah, but luckily they gave us some of the best plants in the game, like Primal Pea Shooter, aka Pea Shooter Good Version. It's a pea shooter that fires slowly but does good damage and knocks zombies back after a hit. A tier. Primal Walnut, it's Walnut, but better. S tier. Perfume Shroom is helpful, I'll give it that. The dinosaurs are some of the most annoying obstacles in the game and having the ability to charm some of them for a bit is nice. Keyword there is some of them. For being the only answer to one of the most annoying gimmicks, it takes way too long to recharge for it to actually help. It charms all dinos in a row when activated. Oh, but three dinos spawn in three different rows? Sucks, doesn't it? Buy our power-ups! It's like asking someone to mow your lawn and giving them a vacuum cleaner. It helps. D tier. Cold Snapdragon doesn't even breathe fire. He just blows vape clouds on everyone. Kinda rude, dude. Gonna have to put you in the F tier for being a rude dude. Remember, besties, don't blow anything into other people's faces unless it's air kisses. Or darts, that'd be fun. Primal Sunflower. It's Sunflower, but better. A tier. Primal Potato Mine. It's Potato Mine, but better. Probably the best one shot in the entire game. S tier. Shrinking Violet is an interesting plant. It's pretty much a Honey I Shrunk the Kids horror movie. Interesting concept, but I've seen better. And what's so wrong with being small anyways? Just because something is small doesn't mean it's weak. Ever seen an ant? B tier! The Moonflower is the start of the shadow plants and is honestly a great place to start. Because not only does Moonflower act just like a sunflower, but also powers up nearby shadow plants, giving them stronger extra effects. And the Moonflower is a shadow plant. Regardless if you use the other shadow plants, putting a bunch of Moonflowers together will give you infinite energy. It's unstoppable. S tier. The infamous Deadly Nightshade. One of the most infamous dangerous plants in real life. It's alright. When it's not powered, it's downright awful. It can hit stuff three times and then just chills. He's done his part, he's gotta take a breather. When powered though, he gets no breather. He regrows his petals and can also fire them at a range, which is pretty good damage wise, especially for his sun cost. B tier. Shadow Shroom, the ultimate life form. When eaten, he poisons the zombie. Kind of similar to the chili bee, but instead of killing the zombie or turning it away, it just damages it. The damage ignores armor, but like, why not just use the chili bean? The poison can spread when powered up by a moonflower, but why would you use a slow killing effect towards the back near your moonflowers, or have your moonflowers up front, when you could just use the chili bean? Or like, anything. Not even the Chaos Emeralds could help this shadow. C tier. Dusk Lobber is the real ultimate life form. This plant is a catapult that shoots splash damage explosive buds at zombies in its range. When it goes into Ultra Instinct though, it fires in the lanes beside it as well. A whole column of these knuckleheads can put out some massive damage. Dusk Lobber personally deserves an A tier. Escape Root is a 50 sun plant that... he's gone. Grimrose is the final non-premium shadow plant, with its primary ability to summon the seal of Orichalcos and send one unlucky zombie to the shadow realm. Silly lawn owner. 
Your Grimrose can only defeat one zombie before it gets sent to the graveyard. And seeing you're out of lawnmowers, that leaves my Gargantua to attack your house directly. Get his brains, Gargantua! That's where you'd be wrong, Zomboss. Huh? See, when my Moonflower is on the field, Grimrose can send three zombies to the Shadow Realm before going to my graveyard. So that means, say goodbye to your Gargantua! And that guy too! Impossible! Nothing is impossible when you're subscribed to Viddy's Vids. The plant is an A tier, by the way. Next up, we have the Gold Bloom. The Gold Bloom. Well, that must just be the pizza that I ordered. You keep talking, I'm placing bets on F tier. The Gold Bloom, kind of like Jeff Goldbloom. Who is it? Pizza. With a side order of justice. And crazy bread. But impossible! How'd you get past my home's defenses? We paid that pizza guy five bucks to tear that sign down. Yeah, and then I arrested him for vandalism. But now, it's time to search for our convict. We have reason to believe the escaped convict is in this house. Unfortunately, all records of him are contradictory as the judge, jury, and execution happen to all be blind. All we know is that he's uh, located somewhere in this house and he has a history of talking about something called Plants vs. Zombies. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? Plants vs. Zombies? What is that? A couch? No, that's not a couch. He's clean. Let's go check out the rest of the house. And I'd say Electric Current belongs in the C tier. So this is our final tier list for Plants vs. Zombies 2. We really hope you liked the video. We worked really hard to make this project a reality. If you think anything could be different on the list, please leave a comment below. And make sure to like the video. And subscribe to VidiFix and Danerade. I love doing videos on Plants vs. Zombies and calculators and all sorts of fun topics. Hey, buddy. Hey. Hey, why don't you, uh... Go ahead and hop here in this bag, huh? No, I don't want to go in the yeah, sack. Yeah, what are you yeah. doing? Get in the bag! <gasps> <laughs> yeah! Yeah, we got him! That's right, we got him! That's what I call a good day's work. <laughs> uh. Well, I'm no longer a wanted man. My only friend in a long time just got sent to prison, and Dane moved Coconut Cannon to A when I wasn't looking. I mean, life could be worse. Man, this bread is ludicrous.